XJW agents, another tragedy has befallen the Jehovah's Witnesses community. In the early afternoon today, approximately 12.48 local time if I've read correctly, a Jehovah's Witnesses district convention was attacked from the inside. I have further details about this attack and additional concerns about the growing number of Jehovah's Witness terrorists that we are finding worldwide. I only ask this before we begin. Do remember that a large amount of this audience and a lot of your favorite content creators, we were Jehovah's Witnesses. In the not too distant past, it very easily could have been one of us who was injured or lost their life in an attack like this. So please be compassionate and empathetic in your comments today. Let's begin. We would be honored if you would join us. To start on a positive note, I'd like to issue a thank you to our good friend Self-Aware NPC for breaking the news early this morning here in the West, and Eliz at Beth Sarim for adding the update regarding the culprit. Beth doesn't have a channel, but if you enjoy very well-researched and documented content, I highly recommend Self-Aware NPC. I'll link her channel in the description box down below. Now, on to the news. Today, October 29th of 2023, Jehovah's Witnesses were holding an annual district convention with estimates of up to 2,500 attendees. This is important because these conventions are open to public attendance historically and include Jehovah's Witnesses from around the region, including families and young children. During this convention, attendance mandated by their religion, an estimated 52 attendees were injured by an explosion from an improvised explosive weapon. Additionally, one woman attending the convention lost her life on sight. Beyond that, 18 victims are in intensive care, with 6 in critical condition, including a young girl of 12 years old. The attack on the Indian convention is currently being claimed by Dominic Martin. Shortly after the bombing, Martin turned himself in to local authorities in Kerala. Though he claims to have worked alone, another man has been detained in possible connection to the attack. This other detainee's status is currently unknown. Ahead of his surrender to police, Martin posted a video on Facebook Live. Facebook has deleted the video, but there was a cross-posting on Twitter.com. I'll post it here for transparency. <laughs> while I personally don't speak Malayalam, Times Now News was able to transcribe a rough translation of his video. The translation reads as follows, quote, I did the blast and left from the location. I have been working with them since 16 years. They are very dangerous for our country. They are the ones who are going to destroy our country. When I saw this, I couldn't think about how to deal with them. They are teaching four-year-olds bad teachings. They say don't visit members of other religions. They say don't work for the country. I did this so that the world could listen to me. Government should open its eyes. Media should not telecast the technology of the bomb blast because anti-national will use it. Times now admits in its article that the authenticity of the video cannot be independently verified for now. I suspect that given time, investigators will be able to do so. This doesn't sound too dissimilar from another recent Jehovah's Witness terrorist attack by one Philip Foose, who took the lives of over half a dozen Jehovah's Witnesses in a despicable display of violence against his own religion. It seems as though the attacker in India, Martin, was dissatisfied with the religion, having been a member for either 16 years or from when he was 16. The translation makes it difficult to pass. What isn't difficult to understand is that he didn't like the isolationist, anti-governmental teachings of the religion or how they're imposed on children. Jehovah's Witnesses are well known for their stance of political neutrality and their distaste of interfaith events, believing any interactions with non-Jehovah's Witnesses or close associates to be bad association. 
This same rhetoric is presented regularly to children through the religion's public talks, periodicals, and most famously the Caleb and Sophia cartoons. Animated Jehovah's Witness coded life lessons directed specifically at school-age children. If discipline is love, you must love me a whole lot. I want to be clear, this rise in terrorism among current and former Jehovah's Witnesses is appalling. Twice already this year, we've seen terrorist attacks against the Witnesses, Germany and now India, and within the last 12 months, there was another attempted bombing at a Kingdom Hall in Colorado here in the US. I don't know who needs to hear this, but this is not how revenge is taken. Jehovah's Witnesses are, in the saddest sense of the word, sheep, and they're proud of this. They blindly obey any instruction given to them by their religious leaders, the governing body, as they believe their instruction comes from Jehovah their God through said leaders. They are isolationist, homophobic, sexist, anti-interfaith bigots on a doctrinal and theological level. But this is not the fault of the individual witness. The blame lies squarely on the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society and its leaders, the governing body of Jehovah's Witnesses. The same men who deny women leadership opportunities in their religion, casually condone spousal abuse, hide known child predators, and even cheer for the violent end to world governments as orchestrated by their spiritual king Jesus Christ and their supposed heavenly army. I'm going to say this again, men like Dominic Martin, Philip Fuse, and Enoch Apodaca are disgusting, and while I do personally understand their distaste for the religion, the deliberate targeting of the lowest level members is the most harmful thing you can do. And I'm certain I'll read at least one comment in the comment section that says they had it coming, or justice is served, and I cannot abide by that, because of the most vulnerable members of this religion, the children of Jehovah's Witnesses. If you recall early in the video, I cited among the six members in critical condition, one of them was a 12 year old girl. For years now on this channel, Fives and I have championed children's rights in a religion that doesn't recognize the validity of its own kids. Jehovah's Witness kids are the only children who are forced to obey every tenant, teaching, and theological position of their religion, but aren't considered members. Non-baptized children are forced to give up their weekends and door-to-door -door service for a massive corporation, but their volunteer hours don't count in the yearly report. Non-baptized children are forced to sit out of holiday and birthday parties, but aren't allowed to be around JW children unless they're meeting spiritual goals. Non-baptized children are commanded to study, sit through boring, age-inappropriate doctrinal reviews, but aren't even granted the honorific of brother and sister. Jehovah's Witness children are outsiders in a community they can't escape. And when these children are forced to live such a life, to be forced to reject the world around them, but aren't accepted in their own circle except by arbitrary ceremony, and then they're faced with losing their life just for being somewhere they may not want to be, that is the easiest way to destroy any hope there was at reforming this religion and saving those very children. The protesters at the Capitol in Washington, D.C. will need to work three times as hard to wipe away the stain of these terrorist attacks, so their message will be heard, and perhaps the children in this religion won't have to suffer in silence in their own homes. I don't predict that Jehovah's Witnesses will change on their own. Even dropping their hour requirement for preaching is a step in the right direction, for the wrong reason, a day late. Jehovah's Witness elders like to brag about the speed of Jehovah's chariot, but it still moves at a glacial pace, and now it's creating threats from the inside of the organization. I don't know how to end this video, other than to say continue to be kind to your loved one stuck on the inside. I can't say for certain, but if people like Martin, Apodaca, and Fuse had something, someone, away from this obsessive group, perhaps things could have been different. Perhaps we wouldn't see these lives lost. The only way to fight the hatred that is Jehovah's Witnesses is through kindness. We'll do something fun next time, but in the meantime, I suggest following up on the protest in Washington, D.C. on October 31st. After something like this, We'll need more positive voices than ever to elicit positive change, and hopefully prevent more of these attacks. Be well, and be safe, XJW agents.